depending on when you're listening, uh, Freedom Hill family and friends, it's once again a pleasure to uh, come to you on uh, this third week that we've started preaching since the uh, coronavirus has caused us not to be in our church. I welcome you into my library in my home and uh, we want to thank you for the way you've been responding uh, uh, with text messages and phone calls telling me how much you're being blessed by, the, by uh, what you're hearing. I want to ask you to keep praying for our nation, for our president and the leaders nationally, for our governor, who I think, again, is doing an outstanding job. And we thank you for the way you have been responding with your tithes and offerings, uh, both through the mail and with Give a Fly. So don't stop. We're going to talk again today about the mind. Uh, we we uh, finished uh, two weeks ago, as you recall, uh, we were on that Damascus Road in Luke 24, and uh, the people in started out depressed and down, but they ended up with joy. Last week we were shipwrecked with Apostle Paul, and uh, we referred to uh, some of the things from the, from the first week. This week we're going to refer to the last two weeks as we go to... Um, Isaiah the 26th chapter and the third and fourth verses today. Before before I go there, I want to I want to remind you. Well, well, why don't we go there uh, first? All right, let's let's read that uh, that uh, 26th chapter. In that day, this will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Begin at the first verse. He sets up walls and ramparts for security, open the gates that the righteous nations may enter, that the one that remains, the one that remains faithful. And here's where I want to get to. The steadfast mind thou will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in thee. In another version of the Bible it says, you will keep him perfect in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And then the next verse says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord is everlasting strength. Once again, we're talking about the mind. You remember last week we said you are spirit, you have a mind, and you live in a body. You have a soul. Uh, and that soul consists of mind, will, and emotion. You are a spirit. You live in a body. You have a soul. Let me say that again. You got it? The soul consists of the mind, the will, and the emotion. And we said that hope is the anchor of the soul. And then we went on to, 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 to go into Hebrews 11 that says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And I said to you that hope See what faith seizes. Hope, S-E-E, -E, what faith, S-E-I-Z-E-S. -E Amen? And we mentioned that hope is literally the eyes of faith. Once again, Hebrews 11 say, Without faith it's impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must, must, must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right? Now let's, let's take a look at what he's saying here about uh, the mind, because that's where the enemy works. He works on our mind. He cannot, as we mentioned again, he cannot come into our spirit and possess us, but he can influence us. And let's remember again, I keep referring to what I've already said, but I'm going back. That, uh, the mind is not born again. Our spirit, that's who we are, is born again. First, Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. With a proper interpretation of that word is he's a new creation. Old things are passed away, and all things become new. But the mind is not born again. The mind is renewed through the word of God. So 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 what what Isaiah is saying here is God will, will, will keep us in perfect peace who mind is stayed on him. Why? Because we trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, as, as, as some people interpret that, 
Yah is for Jehovah, the Lord is everlasting strength. So the secret of the source of this peace is in not us, but a God who can do anything but fail. You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord, Jehovah, that's what we're talking about, is everlasting strength. All right? The, the emphasis here is not on us, it's on the one we're trusting, and that is Jehovah God. Because he is Jehovah, we can trust in his person. Amen? The Bible says in Hebrews 6 and 18, it is impossible for God to lie. And again, in 2 Timothy 2 and 13, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He, can den he cannot deny himself. So because he is Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, the God of the covenant, we can trust him. And not only can we trust him, but because he is Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, we can trust his promises. Here's a, here's a favor of mine on, on, the, on the headstone or at, 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 my, at, at my wife's, uh, at the cemetery where my wife is, uh, her body, and, and my name is already there, my spot, uh, is, this, is this scripture, 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Every promise that God has made already has a yes on it. Amen? We don't have to try to get him to change his mind. There's a yes on it. So not only can we trust his person for who he is, we can trust his promises because of who stands behind him. We can trust his purposes. I don't care what's going on in your life. Uh, Romans 8.28 says, All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Amen? Everything is working together. Everything isn't good, but it's working together. Those of you who bake cakes, you know how you put all the different things out that go in a good cake. If you eat one of those, each one of those, you taste them. Some of them taste terrible, but when they go together, they come out good. And life is that way. And so when things are going bad, when things come on us that we, don't, we can't handle, we got to know that no matter what it is, if we trust God and we stay with God, if we don't let the enemy get in our mind, that all of this is going to work together for good. Why? Because you can stand on the promises of God. Amen? So, so we got to... Uh, 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 the, the reason for us to, to rest and dwell in perfect peace is because He is an unfailing God. He can do anything but fail. Not only is He an unfailing God, but, but you, can, you, can, you can keep Him, you have that perfect peace. The Bible says, for the Lord is, an, is everlasting strength. Uh, one version says, for Jehovah is the rock of ages. Amen. Have you ever noticed a rock will last decades and decades and even centuries? Rocks don't wear out. God is a God who doesn't change. Amen. That's called the immutability of God. Amen. Not only is he an unfailing God, he is an unchanging God. If God says it, that just settles it. Amen. I, I, I used to hear people say, God said it, I believe it, and that settled it. But it doesn't really matter whether you believe it or not. If God says it, that really sells it. So, so he is the source of our peace. And, and, and so let's, let's look at how, how the scope of this peace. You will keep in perfect peace, him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Amen? Romans 5 and, and, and 1 says this, Therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. So we have the peace of justification. Justification is a forensic, is, is a legal term uh, that says whether you're guilty or, or not, if the legal system declare you just, you're just. There's no punishment. 
that there's no record, basically, of what you did, because by declaration, you have been declared just. Uh, the one who takes my messages each week, uh, even when we were at church and had it on uh, Google and Facebook, it's my grandson, Josh, Joshua Hill. And uh, years ago, he was just a little boy when, when O.J., the situation came up, and watching it on TV as a little boy, he went and told his daddy, O.J. is, dead, is guilty, daddy. Well, no matter what different ones want to think, the system declared him just, and he was justified. It meant that whether you think he did or whether he did, basically he didn't. And that's what God does for us. He justifies us. When Jesus Christ went to the cross, He took our sins, He took our sickness, He took our poverty, He took all of that to the cross. And that's why when He said, it is finished, it was finished. And many things uh, that we're asking God to do, He's already done. Many things we're asking Him for, it's already ours. And our churches need to teach more about getting what's yours by appropriating it through faith than asking God to give us what's ours. Even the seminaries uh, don't teach us how to access healing, how to access other miracles. You know, when Jesus went to the cross, he took it all with him. He took our place. So we've been justified because of what he did with his substitute. Not only do we have justification, uh, when we go a little bit further, we got uh, the, 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 the piece of, not, uh, of sanctification and justification. When you go down to uh, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Observe now that Jesus is the one who ministers the peace. When he rose from the dead, he brought peace. And he said in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Okay, okay? And he doesn't just give us peace, but he maintains our peace. Look at Ephesians. Remember I told you last week, bring your pencil and paper. When I'm teaching, I use a lot more scripture but it helps you to get grounded in what we're saying. Because in the scripture, it's where you learn the will and the, uh, through his word, okay? In John uh, 14, 27, again, I leave my peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. you got peace in the midst of whatever you're dealing with now. you got peace, amen? But the enemy comes to take your peace. That's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the thing of the devil. We'll hand it to him through worry and not trusting in God. Amen? So, so uh, in Ephesians, in Ephesians 2.14, it says, For he himself is our peace. Not only did he give us peace, but he himself is our peace. Amen? So, so the, the, he, he has completed our peace in himself. And, 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 and a little further, uh, uh, if, if we want to go one, one more uh example of, of the sources of the peace, there's the peace of, of glorification. And, and when I think of glorification, I want to go to the New Testament, uh, as I've done with these other two, but when, when, you, when, when, when you look uh, at the Psalm 37, 37, it said, Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. The, the, you know, the, the future, so just mark him. His future is peace. He was speaking in the Old Testament of what was coming when Jesus Christ came. That was our future then, but that's our present now. That, that's, why, that's why David said in the psalm, Though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For Lord, you are with me. There is a peace about knowing that no matter what you're going through, God is with you. Amen? And, and so, you, 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 we've got to learn to apply this thing that we're talking about. We've got we to not think on the problem, 
we got to think on the answer to the problem. And the answer to the problem is God. Amen? So what we got to learn to do is we've got to learn to trust God based on His Word. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut, cut a little bit out. So, so you got to trust God. Not, not only do you think on God, but you got to trust God. Amen? That's, that's the secret of perfect peace. Thinking on God, trusting God. He's going to keep you in, in perfect peace. The more we think on God, the more we will trust in God. Does that make sense to you? The more we think on God, the more we're going to trust in God. And the more we trust in God, the more testimony we have to the world about who God is, what He is, and what He can do. Do you remember last week when we talked about Paul on the ship? I saw this little index card, something I had written down, and I didn't get to say it to you. And, and I'm, I'm putting it in here because it, it'll fit. I talked about those men on the ship, and you remember that your rocket on came up, and it was a storm, even they were experts they, they, they had never seen. It's kind of like coronavirus or any kind of storm that comes up. Satan brings the storms. God doesn't bring uh, death. God brought healing. God brought deliverance. God brought uh, victory over death. But I, I wrote down this little note. I said, this was a storm they had never dealt with. And I said, let me tell you something. There are storms and problems out there in your life, in our life, that we have never dealt with. We never thought about. We never thought it could happen to us. You never heard of them. But I mentioned that nothing is too hard for God and nothing surprises God. So back to where we were, you got to trust God. Amen? The more we think on God, the more we will trust Him. If you get up in the morning and start thinking about your problem, you'll carry Him all day. But if you get up in the morning and begin to thank God for who He is, and thank God for whose you are, you'll start realizing that peace that passes all understanding will, will just start coming on you. Amen? So, so, so you got to trust God. Let, let, let me give, let, 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 I was going to give a few witnesses, but let me go a little further. So there must be, uh, uh, to trust God, you got to focus on what I've said. Your mind has got to learn to focus, you know. You, you can't make a resolution, you know, a New Year's resolution. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You can make no resolution for a mind of, pre, uh, of peace. You, there can be no resignation to the state of being, uh, 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 you can't deal. You can't get indifferent or complacent. You know, you just have to say, "This is what I'm going to do." And so you start out by getting your mind renewed. I said way back there, the spirit is reborn. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. But you don't have a new mind. When you look at uh, Romans 12 and 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Don't conform to the world. We think like the world. We, we walk like the world. We dress like the world. We talk like the world. We get on Facebook. We spend more time there hearing worldly stuff than we do here in God. We, some of us get up and jump to Facebook to see what's happening and who's talking instead of meditating on His Word day and night. In, early, in the morning and at night, you'll be like trees planted by rivers of water that give forth fruit in due season and your leaf don't wither. Amen. When the storms come, your leaf ain't going to wither. When, 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 when viruses come and other things come, your leaf will not wither. That's the person who get up and walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but in his word that person meditates day and night. That's the person that's going to be like a tree planted by rivers of water. And rivers of water, water represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. And until you invite the Holy Spirit in, and then ask not only the Holy Spirit to come in, but ask the Holy Spirit to start filling you. Amen. And then, and then when, you, when He fills you, uh, then ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you. Amen? 
And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on that in another week or so, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which most denominations do not teach as being a separate entity. For, for uh, 50 years almost, I didn't teach it because that's how I was brought up. Even Schofield uh, misinterprets uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, which talks about, about us being baptized into the body. But we got to let the Holy Spirit have his way in our life. And just because you are saved, that is not the, the, the ultimate goal that we ought to have. When we, when we walk under the power, the saving gives us the saving. But you know, over there in Luke, I didn't mean to go here, over there in Luke uh, uh, 24 and, and, and 49, when we, our first message uh, three weeks ago, uh, Jesus told them, uh, they, they were real happy and, and Jesus told them they was going to be endued with power when the Spirit came upon them. Now in John 20 and 22, he had already breathed on them and they had received the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Spirit had not come upon them, amen, to empower them. That's why he told them to go back to Jerusalem. And then we find and, and Luke who wrote, who wrote Luke, and then Luke, Luke finished the story in Acts, the very first chapter and the eighth verse. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And so we want to teach uh, pretty soon about the Holy Ghost coming upon because you, you see that the, the Holy Ghost, John 14 and 17, I believe, Jesus talks about the Spirit, the Spirit will be with you and in you because they didn't have him then. The Holy Ghost came after Jesus died when he said, I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you another comforter, and he's going to stay with you. That comforter was the Holy Ghost. Amen? Now, I'm wetting your appetites. We're going to cover that maybe next week or the following week. But back to the rivers, river, the, the, uh, when we talked about the waters, uh, when we were talking about the blessings, and we're talking about uh, uh, from Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, and not standeth in the way of the sinner. Now sit it in the seat of the scornful. Amen. But in his law, he'll meditate day and night. And, and then we talked about the, the rivers. Once again, in John, in the Gospel of John and the uh, seventh chapter, Jesus talked about rivers of living water. Once again, he's speaking of the Holy Ghost. The rivers of living water came when the people had had the baptism of, uh, in the Holy Ghost. All right? Uh, 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 three chapters behind that, the fourth chapter, talking to the woman at the well, he talked about a well in us. The well is what we have when, they have when we have the Spirit in us. A well, well water is contained. It doesn't flow out. A few chapters later in that seventh chapter, he talks about rivers of living water. That's when people have gotten the, the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit or of the Holy Spirit. And it has come upon them and he's flowing out now, not only to that person, the, the full well, as that person held of the Spirit, which produces the fruit, but now it's pouring out, blessing somebody else. And that's our goal. When we stop thinking so much about self, we'll start being a blessing to somebody else. Amen? So let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And that's how you develop that mind with the things we're saying right now. So the mind has to be renewed. Again, we're back to that, Romans 12 and 2. Amen. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed. The only way you, 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 you are born again, but you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why folk in the church, some conform with the world. They haven't let the transformation of the word renew their mind. And then again in Ephesians 4, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What, what does that involve? You remember in um, 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, it talks about casting down uh, imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself to the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The devil get in your mind and our imaginations will make us see everything negative. It makes us afraid of things that's not there. Make us looking for what will happen tomorrow and tomorrow don't have, never come. Did you know the name of God uh, when he told Moses to go down in, in, in Israel? Moses said, what is your name? He said, I am. Moses basically said, okay, I know you am now in, 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 in the present tense, but what, what's your future name? He said, I am. In other words, God is always there. Amen? 
the blessings of God is going to be new every day. And when you get up every morning, if you stop looking for the negative, cutting on the news to see how bad it is today, how many people died, all the negative stuff. Get up in the morning and say, this is a day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The favor of the Lord go before me, changing, turning impossibilities into possibilities. I'm surrounded by favor. My home is, 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 is favored. My children are favored. I am blessed. I, I, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going to be the lender and not the borrower. Just begin to say what God says about you. And you'll find your days will be better because God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. He gives us power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? So, so you got to control the thoughts. That's why I said casting down the imagination of every high thing that exalts itself against God. And, and then you got to direct your thoughts. When you look at Hebrew at Philippians 4 and 8, uh, it, uh, it says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praiseworthy, think on these things. Amen? So, 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 so God is saying that, that the Word and His will will stabilize your mind. You'll, you'll be in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on God. Why? Because you trust Him. And let me tell you something. God will not disappoint the person who trusts Him. When trust is accompanied with effort it takes to focus on it, uh, uh, the, the mind on God and His Word, God will not disappoint. You know, look at the things that we choose to uh, worry about. Money, our parents, our health, our children, uh, all these things. You know what worry is? Worry is a quick getaway in a car without a motor. Have you ever jumped in a car to get away from something and find that the motor is not there? You're not going to move. Worry will not move anything for you. Amen? But what faith do, faith lets God do the worrying. And you know God don't worry. And, 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 and it just shares the need with Him in prayer. You know, in other words, uh, 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 the, the scripture says, cast all your, your cares on me. I care. Amen? So, 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 so peace is the outcome of a focused mind and a fixed mind. Okay? This, this doesn't mean a freedom from sorrow. Doesn't mean that. Uh, in the last 10 years, I had my baby daughter to go to the Lord in 2010. My mother, and I'm an only child, to go in 2011. Uh, my wife, who I loved and to this day miss unbelievably in uh, 2015. But God gave me the strength not only to preach their home goings, but to keep growing as I miss them. So it doesn't say that there will not be no sorrow, but it does say there will be peace in the storm. You're going to have the storm, but you're going to find peace in it. It, it, it. It's like Paul. You remember? Paul said all those things last week, in that, last week in that storm, but he found peace. Why? The last thing he said was, I believe God. I serve Him. I belong to Him. But more than anything, I believe God. I believe God. Um, I, I think it's about time for me to, 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 to uh, close this out, but as I do, there is a, a song that I, that I think about. Jewel and Estella Wilson uh, used to sing it uh, as a, as a, as a um, duet. Every once in a while I'd join them and sing it as a trio. Uh, Jewel went to be with the Lord and, uh, a few years ago. Stella has been with me now 50 and a half years, a little better than that. She just turned 92, and uh, the first week we wasn't at church. I hadn't started broadcasting. At 11 o'clock, my phone rang, and it was Stella. And she said, I just want to hear your voice, Reverend. 
I've been listening, I've been hearing you all these years at 11 o'clock. And since I couldn't hear you preach, I said I'd call you on the phone and just hear your voice. She, she said, told me she loved me, and she hung up. But they used to sing this song, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit. And, 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 and that's what God wants to do for every one of us. He wants to give us that wonderful peace. So I say to you as we close, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I read verse 8, whatever things and all that. But it said, be anxious for nothing. Don't be stressed about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So God bless you today. And I, I went kind of fast uh, because I have quite a bit. I try to get into a message. I had a friend of mine who joked with me once. Uh, and I was trying to learn to slow down and he said to me, you're blessed. You try to get 50 minutes in a half hour and most guys talk slow because they're trying to get 15 minutes in a half hour. So I hope this blessed you today. Let us pray. Father, bless your word. Bless those under the sound of my voice. Bless America. Bless Ohio. Bless Dayton. Bless Freedom Hill. Bless men and women of God, wherever they are. Satan, you're a thief and a liar. We order to you to take your hands off of this city, off of this nation, off of this whole world. We come against you and the disease and sicknesses you bring in the name of Jesus, we take away your power and your authority. It's already been done, and I stand using that authority that Jesus gave me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, and God bless all of you.